All right, we are here at my Vermi Hut indoor worm bin, and today we are going to be checking up on the carb challenge that we did last time. And with that carb challenge, we had a piece of Ezekiel bread, we had a piece of honey wheat bread, and we also had um, some spaghetti. I was gonna check on it within five days, and it's actually been seven days. And something that I'm looking at here is that overall, the volume is a lot lower. I'm seeing a lot of castings on the side. So that makes me think they may have eaten all the food. So hopefully I've gotten in here quick enough. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Right here is where the Ezekiel bread was because the spout is over on this side. So let me just kind of dig through and see what we can find. And right away we're looking at some worms. Here's a red wiggler. You can see it's bulging clitellum right there but they are not shy at all. We also put on top some of the banana peel that had been from the previous feeding and sure enough, there it is. They are still all throughout it, it looks like. Yep, <laughs> I think this was a bit of a banana ball time lapse that we did in the last video, but they have eaten it all the way, so I'm just gonna set that to the side. But let's, let's dig in here and see what we can find. We put a lot of bedding on here. I did that with a, my previous experiment in the outdoor bin. It really was not moist enough because of how much bedding I had put on and the experiment didn't go as fast as I expected. So I'm hoping that's not the case with this one. I've kind of learned my lesson after checking that one. But I thought I'd probably already hit the bed by now. Or hit the bed. Hit the bread by now. But I'm not seeing it. Let me dig under a little bit. Oh no. <laughs> I don't think there's, I don't think that there is any sign of that Ezekiel bread. I'm going to keep digging, but I am not seeing anything. These big chunks are toilet paper rolls, which I really need to break apart more. They kind of get matted with each other when they shrink down. So I've been shredding them, but this this tray was actually inoculated underneath this whole Fermi Hut system. So that didn't happen with this one, but there are pieces of something right here. And I'm seeing little tiny pot worms. I don't know if you can see it. This is I don't know what this is, if this is a piece of the bread or something from a previous feeding. Certainly right here they're after something, but I cannot really make out what it is or if it is anything, I'm just seeing bedding. So let me kind of keep looking. I am seeing a lot of cocoons, which you probably can't see from the video, but lots of babies you know, on my thumb right there, a little chunky baby, you know, just tons of worms. This, this system on all levels, you know, little baby wants to stick onto my finger. On all levels, this, this Vermi Hut system has just a ton of worms, but what it doesn't have is Ezekiel bread right here from what I can tell. All right, so, <laughs> Anybody that thought Ezekiel bread would go first, you are definitely part of the winning team. You may be in a tie. Let's see. So let's go over to the honey wheat bread. But what this is telling us is that they will absolutely annihilate bread, if you're wondering. And lots of, lots of worms. This is great. All throughout here. And I can see um, chunks of coffee. I didn't grind my coffee quite as well as I have in the past, so they're they're getting to that too. But again, I don't see any of the honey wheat bread and just tons of worms all throughout here. Blue worms, red wigglers in abundance, both of them. And you can tell the red wigglers, they're chunkier and they've got a bulging clitellum. Whereas the Blue worms are thinner, faster, and the clitellum is um, even or non-bulging. And they've got a bit of a blue tint when you get them in the right angle of light. 
I don't see any bread in there. I am feeling just a slight amount of heat in the middle, and I don't know if that's just because it's the middle of the bin. Again, lots of worms right there. But right here where my fingers are, I feel just a little bit of heat. I don't know if that's from where the feeding was or what, but there's no bread. So bread, <laughs> wheat bread, or I'm sorry, honey wheat bread and Ezekiel bread tie, which I think Ezekiel bread is like a flourless bread, so they really can't even be compared to each other. But they're not there, so let's check out spaghetti and see if there is any spaghetti left. I'm just gonna kind of, while I'm over here, dig through here and aerate the bin. Make sure there's no anaerobic spots in it. Again, these toilet paper tubes. I put way too many in here. A few are, are fine, but I just put way too many when I started this and they're just gonna take a long time to break down. But the worms do love them. They love hanging out inside of them. All right, this corner, <laughs> there, I mean, if you look at this, there are just, no matter where I go, there are just worms all over the place. I mean, in every nook and cranny of this bin, that is, it's fantastic. Oh, and here's a seed. At first I thought that was a, um, a cocoon, but that would be a giant worm if it was. It's just a apple seed or something. But we'll get over here, and actually, you know, since I'm going over there, that is where the spaghetti was right here, so let's just go for there and see if there's any spaghetti. Oh, the only spaghetti I'm seeing is a bunch of worms. Wow. There is no spaghetti. So if you're wondering if you can put spaghetti in a worm bin, yes. <laughs> Honey wheat bread in a worm bin, yes. Ezekiel bread, absolutely. They are very happy. They're gonna get a big feeding because clearly I'm not feeding this bin enough. Even with a little experiment, um, they are not satisfied, which they're, you know, all of this bedding is food, so it's not like they're starving. But yeah, no spaghetti, so there you go, carb challenge. Worms like to eat their carbs. Now we'll see if, uh, if they get fat off this. I'm gonna start putting my stale bread in here and burying it. I put it in the past, and you've probably seen that in some other videos. Put it on top, it really attracted a lot of mites. Um, but they, burying it, man, it disappeared wicked fast. All right, let's go ahead and, since I think I've aerated everything here, we've gotten through the entire van, we're gonna set up the feeding zone. And I'm gonna kinda clean off the edges too, real quick. Just to give a fresh start. There we go. All right, let's get set up here. And I'm probably, I'm gonna keep adding bedding. I, I'll do that all the way till it's almost a foraging type situation here. I'll keep adding bedding with every feeding, but I'm not gonna add as much as I did last time because there is a lot in here. Although it went down from when we opened it up, it definitely seemed like it was lower. I've kind of fluffed it up here, so it's a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna have a broad feeding because I don't wanna really heat things up. This bin doesn't really go through seasonal changes because it's indoors. So unlike my outdoor bin, which I think is slowing down a little bit because it's a little cold, this bin keeps working. So this is what I had in mind. Some really easy stuff like lettuce stalks and celery, and then some bigger stuff like bananas. I don't know if it's the time of year, but we've kind of run into some bananas where you open them up and they're brown, even though the, the peel was yellow. I don't know if it's just this time of year or what, but so it's not like I'm trying to give them good food. This is food that went bad. We'll give them a whole peel. That, these two, we're gonna be seeing these for at least another couple, three feedings. But these celery, these lettuce, this apple core, um, this lettuce should all go fast. Tomato probably go fast. This will go fast. So a lot of fast food and then a lot of slow food. Not very colorful. <laughs> but that's what they're getting. And we'll put a little bit of bedding. I meant to put this on the bottom, but it's gonna go on top. And then of course, we're gonna do our coffee. That's quite a bit. Put some tea bags in there. And then I'm gonna add some more. I've been kind of saving up the tea bags. I wanna add some more of this kind of bedding for them. 
Now this is kind of turning into a bigger bedding feast than I expected, but that's all right. And then we will do our grit, which is just pulverized eggshells and whatever they don't use will go in my garden and it'll be just fine. So let's kind of get this down. Now all this food was frozen and then thawed out a little bit. I find that when I freeze my food, it really helps the breakdown process for the worms, especially with this, um, the lettuces and stuff. Cause some of that lettuce is still alive. It's still the cells, individual cells are still alive. But once you freeze them, they turn into mush pretty quick. And I actually demonstrated that with cabbage in my outdoor bin. I'll put a link up there for it. And I've got two other bins besides this one, a tiny worm bin and an outdoor bin, 20 gallon fabric pot bin. And those are all on my channel. So if you subscribe, you can hit the bell, get notified when I've got new videos for those, but I do different experiments in them too. It's always interesting to see what different bins do. This is a tower. The tiny worm bin is just a Rubbermaid tote and the outdoor bin is just a fabric pot. Three very different bins that do great in what I use them for. All right, there is the feeding. Um, I'll put the newspaper back on. We've got some worms on the top here. This is just a fantastic bin as far as the number of worms. I estimate it to be about 3,000, but I think it may have more than that. It's good. The bin itself has three layers and they come and go as they please. Carb challenge, the only thing I can say is they like carbs. I, you know, seven days probably wasn't, was too long. I probably should have been here on day four. So I may redo this experiment at some point in the future, but bottom line, you put bread, you put spaghetti into your worm bin, they will eat it. So that's a good thing to learn from it. So I hope everybody's having a great day and happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.